apart from where we interact with young leaders who have made an impact in the life of others to tell us how they began their journey, how far it has been with them, and how far they want to go. My guest today is a former Joy FM reporter and now owns his own business called Du Pride Agro Business. His name is Fred Duho. We are going to pay him a visit to tell us more about his business. So guys, follow me. Let's check out. Hi. Wow, no Welcome. Welcome, Welcome to my farm. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to Inspirational Chat. Thank you very much. Um, how, how are you? Everything is fine. So this is your business, right? Yeah, so welcome to Two Pride Agro Investments. Okay, Pride. Uh, yes, Two Pride. Pride. D U D R I D E. Two Pride. Pride. Yeah, two and the Pride in what we do. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, so basically, this is where we are based uh, with our business and uh, we deliver to every part of the country. So you're welcome, Hope. Thank you very much. Talk a little uh, bit about yourself. Who is Fred? Uh, so my name is Fred. Okay. And, uh, I'm a journalist by profession. Mm. Formerly a professional teacher as well. So I've been in the classroom for five years. Five years. Before I left to pursue my degree at the Ghana Institute of Journalism. Okay. And then uh, just for my passion for journalism. So I did journalism uh, and I've been practicing journalism for the past four years now. So basically this is where I am. One would ask, why am I into farming? Farming now. Coconuts. Yes, business. I've been doing farming since 2008. Wow, 2008. Yes, yes. I started with um, um, degree. Okay. So even as we speak. So I've, after I've school, been... you went into farming, or you? I do the farming alongside, alongside. education and okay. alongside. Uh, so while schooling, we are at the same time doing. Business. Exactly. So with the pigri, uh, let me just say a little about it. When we started in 2008, okay. we've actually won uh, Best District Farmer mm -hmm. in 2009 and in 2011. District based, uh, Best District Farmer in terms of small ruminants. Okay. Yes, uh, in the Central Tong District. That is where the pigri is based. And then my mom and my dad, they are the caretakers there. So one very interesting thing is my parents did take charge of the pigry and that is what we normally use to um, sort out home okay. when there's the need for any emergency. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we do that one alongside and I've been doing that, like I said, 2008. That has put food on my table and has taken me to a, a number of places. I've gotten a number of opportunities through that agribusiness. Uh, an opportunity a teaching profession wouldn't give me. An opportunity probably any other profession would give me. But from there, uh, teaching for five years, I realized uh, I always said that is not my field because teaching is a calling. How was the experience like? The experience in the classroom is quite an interesting one, especially when you are dealing with children. Okay. So when you are teaching children, it's one different thing teaching. Uh, adults yeah. in the SHS and in the university. For children, they need some special kind of care. So when you know yourself mm -hmm. that you are the person who, uh, even though you are accommodating, but certain things need much mm -hmm. patience to handle. And handling children of uh, tender age mm -hmm. uh, was kind of some kind of challenge for but me. But did you enjoy it? I, I, I really yeah. enjoyed it and uh, yeah, I would say knowledge to children to young ones yeah. you have to blend it with some kind of psychology yeah. so when you are teaching children you blend it with some kind of psychology okay. you have to understand mm -hmm. uh, upbringing of kids you have to study them and know that indeed children need some kind of special care mm -hmm. so in the classroom mm -hmm. uh, I would say it's been some kind of roller coaster kind of journey mm -hmm with this feeling but what I wanted to do was journalism growing up yes because I love to see the kind of comrade most in those days the Bentuche Malos in those days a number of uh, 
I mean, the Kwame Sefaka is who are Manasa still in the business, then Manasa Azuri, who happens to be somebody I so much ad, uh, admire and, uh, and appreciate the kind of work he does. So, honestly speaking, those were some of the motivating um, factors and individuals, I would say role models, who I looked up to and those pushed me to enter into journalism. So, went to DID, pursued a degree in public relations uh, in major. And I, I, I moved to do my national service. But proud to my national service, I left the country to South Africa wow. uh, to do some kind of uh, reporting, basically for a month. And for came me, back. For which media station? Not that. By then, I was with a local radio station, local radio station. Global FM. Oh, yeah. So, global. Yes. So I did that engagement over there mm -hmm. for some period before I left to South Africa and that was what really delayed my national service. Okay. So when I came back I thought the need to do my national service okay. because getting job was quite difficult because I was no longer with the local radio station. So what happened is I applied and did my national service with multimedia, multimedia. Uh, to be specific with the okay. joint business desk. Okay. So I was with the business desk and uh, I, I had the opportunity to do a Bloomberg training, Bloomberg Media Initiative. Uh, I mean, in the whole of Africa, where they were choosing at least 20 people, as part of those 20, it was done in Ghana here, and went to through, I think, uh, almost six months of training, yes, with Bloomberg. So I'm a Bloomberg uh, trained business reporter as well. So after my national service, I started as an intern before the national service. So after the national service uh, happens to, I mean, this coronavirus issue came in. And that has actually... That was last year. That was last year. 2020. 2020. So basically that really um, took a toll. That took a toll actually on the, on the media industry, just like any other business. And my brother introduced me to a business he has been doing for the past five years now. And in actual fact, it is the dwarf coconut seedlings, a hybrid. My brother introduced me to, to the dwarf coconut business. Now, now you are talking about the business. Now, um, tell us how you started your business. Alright, so the great thing is, my brother has been doing this business and is now literally becoming a family business because he has introduced me to it and my siblings are also venturing into it because we felt the need to one green Ghana mm -hmm. feed Ghana mm -hmm. and in essence we are contributing our quota to the development of this country aside the little margin of profit we make out of it which I would say is it's a bit okay if you ask me uh, and it comes at least consistently. Uh, mostly it flourishes during the rainy season because normally people want to plant these coconut seedlings in the rainy season. So now the 12 coconut seedlings, I would like to even introduce you to my brother who started. Okay. Then we will go give better education on why we are into this. Okay. So here you are. And this is, this is my big brother. Okay. Yes. And he's my name, Prince. Prince. Yes. Welcome to Inspirational Chat. Thank you. So he is Prince, okay. and he is the main uh, owner of this business, owner the CEO business. of the Pride Investment. I mean, Agri Business. So you so are supporting. I'm him. now supporting him, mm -hmm. and the whole thing has now become like a family business, mm -hmm. yes, okay. uh, sort of. Yeah. But since you started this business, how is business like? How do people buy? Are they buying? Money. So when I joined in these few months, I would say I am seeing some sort of benefits. Okay. Okay. It's, it's been helpful so far. It's good. Uh, but because he started, mm -hmm. I want him to narrate the narrate. journey for okay. you. Then I can now tell you the little I am also making, mm -hmm. living the uh, professional scene. But I've not left the journalism entirely. Right now, as we speak, I shrink sometimes for the BBC page, when the need comes for them to invite me, oh, I do string for them. So when I, I happen to get that opportunity, I do that. And I'm a freelance as well, okay. and I write for Ghana Business News. My editor being Emmanuel Bukwebi, and 
the one of the yes, one of the assistant journalists. Okay. So I'm still practicing as a journalist and doing this alongside. So the stories in the in the court of the. Of okay, the prince, uh, now tell us how business is going. Too. Okay, actually, my name is Prince Duho, the CEO and the manager of the Pride Agro Farms. Okay. Okay, actually, I was I was also a banker after my university. Okay. I was a banker. I banked for about three years. One day I was just there. Most of the time I do money devotion. So one day I, I was just there, I was doing my money devotion. I read Job chapter one verse eight, and I could realize that I read that Job has seven thousand sheep and other animals that makes him very rich. So I asked myself. By then my salary was thousand five hundred cities, and I asked myself. So if if Job have seven thousand sheep, if I could also have at least five hundred goats. Ghana here, and during, even if it takes me the whole year to sell it on Christmas Day, one at 350 cities, how much will I be getting? So when I calculate it, it's not right. So I think farming will rather get me so more money. So you left your banking so, business, and uh, are you still I left doing it. the banking No, 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 no. I'm, 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 I'm okay with You're what okay. I'm doing right okay. now. After leaving salary, okay. you know that it's just something that is keeping me uh, up specially. But with this, uh, I have fortune now. Like I said, I have fortune by doing my own business. Mm -hmm. So, in that case, uh, I just put in a resignation letter and I resigned from banking. So, I started with pigs. I started running pigs. But I bought two female and one male, and we were doing small, small, small. As of now, we have about 7,000 sheep. Hey, good. Hey, how do you call it? Pigs. pigs. Right now, with 150 goats. So, we are the the importer region. Water you know, region. Okay. I don't have much space. Here. Oh, okay. So okay. The importer region. So through the farming, yeah, now I'm not. I have, I have get that kind of joy of being my own boss by entering into agriculture business. And also with the coconut, as alongside, I was looking for a, a, a food crop that can generate more money. And looking at this, I was doing a market research. And also the investigation about this kind of our crops. I read about mango, guava, and other fruits. But I realized that coconut is every day something that everybody likes to eat every day. Morning, afternoon, evening, we are eating coconut. And other, I also learned people want to export and all that, but they're not getting the quantity. Our track is on the way going to Nigeria. Wow! So about 20,000 pieces of coconut. Coconut seeds to Nigeria. And that was over 200,000 Ghana seeds. Just for a customer. Just for a customer. Even as what we see here right now, they've already deposited for, and about 50,000 of the way can do two trucks. Oh, so you do delivery? We do delivery nationwide. We have the necessary certificate in there. This is our certificate from Ministry of Agri and Business Registration. So this is the plant, plant Protection and Regulatory Service Directory. This certificate from there. And this is for exports. We, we import, as we uh, told you earlier, we import. And also export. So this is the export one. Export is okay. okay. And also this, this one from Gepa, Ghana Export Promotion Authority. And this is the phytosanitary certificate from Ministry of Agric. That testified that how we the product we are selling is the yeah. is genuine and is the actual product here. And this is our business registration. The new pride. The pride. Agro farms. This is the certificate. So all the certificates are there for whoever wants to probably buy dealing the best. Uh, and you see some of the pictures we have there. Yeah, okay, the these coconut. are some of the coconut seedlings. These are some of them. And this the ones now, here. You see? Okay. So this. this is this is it. You can see this is my brother there. Yeah. And that is some of the coconut seedlings we've planted over the years. Okay. So that is basically some of the things we, we're doing here. Um okay. So how many um, countries do you deliver? For now, we deliver with uh, Nigeria mm -hmm. and Gabon. That's the two countries that we deliver Nigeria with. Nigeria and Gabon. Gabon. Yeah, that's the two countries that we have customers. But you supply Dubai. other um, town, like North. So every part of the country. country. If you talk of the country, country. Gonna, we capture country. all the all the regions. All the regions. Yes, yeah. yeah. okay. the new region that has come in, we capture everybody to the northern region. Okay. Even as you speak now, today, this. This evening, I'm supposed to move 700 pieces to Kumasi and 800 to Roma in You're making so, a lot of money. By the grace of God. So, so essentially, I would say the business is quite okay. Mm -hmm. It's good. Mm -hmm. uh, but the main 
purpose and reason in the full course is now how for the local economy to also um, bounce back. I say when people plant these seedlings, okay, within the next two to three years, they are harvesting. The uh, people who will be selling coconut by the roadside are getting their share. Those who will be exporting coconut juice to various countries, the fruit juice, those who will be doing the, the flesh, I mean the fruit in, in, in this fresh state, and a whole lot. So basically, um, that is it. And uh, I don't know. Don't the, great, the coconut, we have three types. We okay. have the and the book, we have three colors. That's okay. right, three varieties. Okay. Is that green? And this we have the, the green here, and then this is the mm -hmm. yellow. Yeah, yellow. And we have the red. This one produces red coconut. Red you coconut. Can, you can see the colors. So yeah, this one looks reddish. This, one, yeah, this is green. green and this, and this is the yellow. yellow. So these are the varieties we have. So they are the dwarf ones and they are very short. Very okay, short. they are short in nature. Uh, and uh, you can, even a child can cut it when it's, it's pretty good. Oh, I see. Yeah. And wow. they bear fruit in two mm -hmm. and a half years to three years. It should be ready for first harvest. Uh, and on an acre, it, it shouldn't get less than 60,000 Ghana seeds when harvested. And also, the maturity is 120 years before the production reduces, but it's still not that. Okay, um, what is your advice for the youth out there who want to establish a business? A lot of people complaining that there are no business or there are no jobs in the country. What is your advice for them? My, to me, my advice for the youth is, you know, it's not all, it's not all about certificate. Mm -hmm. Actually, I have the certificate, but I'm into farming. And I get all my joy from here and I make a lot of money from this. Okay. I will tell you the number of trucks I have at Tema Harbor and the number of cars working for me all the time and also the property, not, not to talk of that, it's a whole lot of millions. Mm -hmm. So I will encourage the youth not to only concentrate on the salary. Because I learned, I learned something that uh, you give money to monkey, monkey will not value uh, the money. Okay. But rather, if you give the banana, the value is yeah. the same as we Ghanaians, we human beings, blacks. When you give someone opportunity, they will not take it, but rather they prefer job. So I will encourage the youth to go into agriculture and they will never regret going into it. If farm. somebody wants to buy some, um, where should a person go? Any contact, location, address? Okay, anyone who wants to buy certified, not just coconut, certified coconut. There are many people roaming in town with some coconut, the local tall ones, I've seen before. And moreover, because we, we are learned people, we, we are not doing what other people are doing because we want to do a Greek. We make sure we get the actual dwarf, what can bear the fruit and also produces on early stage, at early stage for our consumers. So, we have the dwarf coconut. Any quantity you need, we give it to you at an affordable price. And our telephone number is 24 73331 and 024-3736-3330. let me come to you. Um, you're a journalist. What is your view or take on um, Feed the Country and Feed Ghana now um, campaign going on on social media? I, I even stated my yeah, that's my personal opinion on social media. You know, I'm a Facebook enthusiast. I, I do a lot of Facebooking almost all the time. My simple view is that we need to face the country and we need to but face what ourselves. Exactly, do we need to face as a country? As a country, because I'm into a grid right now, let me speak specifically about a grid. Okay, we need to fix what we call the one district, one factory thing. Okay, we need to fix the planting for food and job thing. We are talking about planting for food and job, but virtually when you go around this country, you may not be able to see enough farms. The districts must own land that will be able to do farming. And I don't think any DC will go to any chief, a custodian of the land, and say that we need, let's say, 1,500 acres of land. We want to plow it. We want uh, uh, machineries to be able to invest into our grid plant solely coconut okay we want to do coconut and give a term is four years right so a dc who comes into office and has such an agenda or the government having such an agenda let's say in the volta region ashanti or anywhere the land is good okay sending all machineries there with the focus of planting coconut i give you the next three years you will harvest and that local economy that district will be able to even 
loan money to other districts. Okay, so the planting for food and job is being done, but it's being done haphazardly. And that is what is not helping us. We want some sort of systematic way of doing things. We need to correct the, the, the policies are good, the initiatives are good, but we need to fix certain things about it. We need to go back to the drawing board and say, hey, if planting for food and job in a year we've been able to get only thousand, I'm just giving uh, an example, a thousand tons of maize. Okay, what can we do differently for the next season to get to triple that quantity so that we stop importing maize? Yellow maize is short in the system. Why should it be so? Our lands are fatal. Okay, so you see the number of you that are there who want to farm, you have no idea. People are interested in farming because ever since I started dealing in this dwarf coconut segment, the now of people call me, oh, how do I also start? Okay, I have one plot of land, I want to plant only half. Then you are interested in farming, but you, the government, have to make it lucrative. Put some sort of incentives in place. Okay, look at the Saglemi housing units over there. If you want to tell me that the camping is, I think, around 1,000, over 1,000 housing units. If you are keeping over 1,000 youth there who are energetic, some are from our technical universities, some uh, can build machineries, some are doing horticulture in school, some are learning agric in the university. All of them, these specialties are all gathered there. They are come there. There is a bus that conveys them to a land that is doing farming solely to feed this country. Do you think we will be poor? No. You see, so the initiatives are good, okay, but we need to think through them again. We need to really give them attention and do it better. So fixing the country should start from somewhere, okay. A lot of things need fixing, but because I am solely in the agri sector okay. right now, I would say we should fix the agri sector and other things will fall in place. Mm. Because if we have enough food in the system and you don't need to take five cities to buy a long car of maize, and you are rather buying a local of maize for one city who will not eat and be satisfied you will not think of going to rob anybody because you are not hungry okay so the system when we fix even the agri sector alone if a government should pay its attention that we want to fix only the agri center uh, agri sector and make sure the youth are employed in the agri sector i think a lot of things will work for us as a country wow great uh, thank you very much for coming to Inspirational Chats and I wish you all you guys the best. Thank you very much. We are grateful. Any Thank final you for coming. Uh, my final, final word is uh, there is no dirty job anyway. Uh, when I started, uh, when we started the Pigree and I've been to a number of conferences, people at the I mean, Pigree Association, they said dirty job, clean money. Dirty job, clean money. Because you, you just dirty your hands small and the money that will come out of it. Right now, do I look like a farmer to you? Does he look like a farmer to you? <laughs> we step out, at least we carried you. We are not trying to blow our horn that we own this, we own that, we own this, no. But when we we're coming here, at least we carried you in a car. Okay, that car came from this business. Okay, it came from the farming. So it's Ooh. not necessarily getting fixated about office work and everything. Right now I am, if I get office work, I will do all. But at least certain things must be in place. You get it? So as a youth, if the office ones are not available, venture into farming. There is something really good in that angle for you to go and pick. And in the next two to three years, you will be that person who will save your community. A lot of great personalities are into farming. A lot of them. We can, we, can, we can mention the number. You yeah. see what John Dumelo is yeah, doing? Yeah, John and I supply a lot of them coconuts. You see? Oh, so, a number of rich people you see in this country, a number of politicians, they come here to get their coconut seedlings. Really? You were here when I posted on Facebook, when, uh, what's the name? Uh, Sadiq, Sadiq yeah. Obama. Yeah. Okay, Sports Obama. The Angel, uh, Angel FM reporter, okay, he came to buy coconut seedlings in large quantity. He has farm. He's just not doing only journalism. Only journalism. Okay. okay, he has farm. He's doing other things. He was on the farm recently. Look at Sami Dako, the lawyer, the one who deals with Anas. He's into big time farming. A number of you are there. Who are into farming? Because the time will come, you would not get the opportunity to continue that office work. Yeah. And you have to look for an alternative. By then it would have been too late. But if you start it alongside, by the time you realize, when the big man tells you, oh, Master, leave our workplace, you have something to follow. You get it. You have a backup plan. So let's not get so fixated on 
office work office and work. everything. If I get office work, I'll do it. But you must blend the two. Let the two of them go hand in hand. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you too for Fred. coming. We are we are grateful for your time. Thank you.